properties of cross product. So in these properties, the A, B, and C, they are vector. I just don't want to draw a bunch of arrows on top of each letter. And then the yellow C is a scalar. We have uh, six properties. The first one, the way I think about this for most of them is just like a uh, basic arithmetic just like basic uh, arithmetic operation. So cross product, just think about that as like multiplication. So A cross B is the same thing as negative B cross A. Um, when you switch the order, you have to add a negative. And then number two, this uh, scalar C, I will think about that as a constant C times vector A cross vector B. So that is the same thing as scalar C. Either you cross the B and A first, or you can do A cross C times B. And then number three, A cross B plus C is the same thing as A cross B plus A cross C. That one, I will think about that as a distribution. Number four, A plus B cross C. So that is A cross C plus B cross C. Again, I will think about that as a distribution. And then number five, A dot B cross C is the same thing as A cross b times c so if you think about this is as a multiplication it's pretty easy to to uh to uh, absorb right so a times b times c is the same thing as a times b first and then you take the product times c but this is uh, in vector then you have to use the proper language like a dot b cross c is equals to a cross b uh, dot product c and then the last one, the last one is not so obvious. You have A cross product B cross C that is equals to A, A dot C times B and then A dot B times C. All right, so let's take a look at uh, a few more properties for the standard basis vector I, J, and K. So we go by pair. So the first pair I, J, and K cross product i cross j equals to k when you switch the j and i the k becomes negative j k i switch k and i you get a negative k i j switch i and k you get a negative right so let's do some quick exercise i would like to find a vector not with determinants but using properties of cross product so the first one you have vector k cross i minus 2j so k cross this vector so what do we do first so the first thing that we are going to do is uh, i am going to do something like a distribution i will put a quotation mark on that because this is a vector so we have k cross i and then i am going to add k cross negative 2j and then what what else and then i will just do a k cross i and then plus uh, this one, I'm going to take the negative two out and then K cross J. And then this one is by properties number three. The first one I would say is by, uh, is that this is by property number three. And then also now you have K cross I, right? So K cross I, take a look at this, K cross I here. K cross I is J. And then how about the K cross J? The K cross J is I right over there. So you have a two, you have a J and then plus negative two and then K cross J that is I. So this is same thing as two I plus J. Oh, uh, uh, no, 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 no. K cross J is negative I, negative I. So negative, negative, you have positive, then you have two I plus J. It is just that simple. Let's take a look at the green one. The green one, you have I plus J cross I minus J. All right. So what do we do first? Uh, the first thing that I will do is I, I will just do something like a distribution. I will just do it like that. So that is equals to I plus J and then cross I. And then you do a plus. I always do a plus because the negative sticks with the J. And then I plus J and then cross negative J. And then what else? I cross I, so I cross I, and then you plus J cross I. You can pick this up from the blue line in when we reach to the next line. So we have I cross negative J, and then plus J cross negative J. Okay, and then what is next? The next step is you have I cross I, 
uh, I'm going to write an, an extra line. So I will just put this in the parenthesis and then J cross I and then plus that one, I will pull a negative one out and then do a I cross J and then pull a negative one out as well and then do a J cross J. Okay, and then I cross I. Oh, okay, here. This is why I, I picked this problem. Every time you have a vector, listen, every time you have a vector, it doesn't matter what the dimension is. I should put it right, right over here. Every time you have a vector, let's say vector A, I don't really care about how many components we have, two components, three components, four components, I don't care. Every time you cross a product to itself, the answer is equal to zero. Every time you cross a product to itself, everything becomes a zero. So if you don't be, be uh, if you don't believe me, you can try something like this. You can try a equals to uh, i plus j plus k, and then this one also a uh, vector a. You have i plus j plus k, and then when you do the cross product, you are going to have this i j and k, and then these are all one, and then when you do the determinant i minus j and then plus k, you will see that this will be all one, one, one. This will be all one. When you do the determinant, do you see, do you see why? One times one minus one times one, this will be i times zero, minus j times zero, plus k times zero. So everything becomes a zero. The vector will be just a zero. All right. As a result, this is a zero, and then plus J i, J i, you can look it up. J i, where is my J i? J i is negative k. And then how about i j? i j is positive k. Okay, so this is a negative k and then plus negative one and then times k and then plus negative one. J cos itself is a zero. So at the end of the day, we have a negative k minus negative k. Then we have a negative 2k. That is the answer. All right, so this is the end of this video. If you like the way I explain the property of cross product, give this video a like. If this is something that you would like to watch, give my channel a subscribe. Truly appreciate your help and support. As always, I will meet you all in the next video. Signing out.